here. They're moving the furniture in the science lab for a year seven class, but that's nothing compared to what the school's been doing to the year seven curriculum. We felt as a school we'd reached a plateau with our achievement. We were getting high 70s, but we feel that longer term our students are capable of even more. We wanted to have different types of students. We wanted to make sure that our students were independent learners. We can actually put some of the resources on the back. They were able to use information and skills in a range of different scenarios. We wanted them to be able to get on with each other. Hinchleywood's head of science, Sue Ecott, is about to lead a class where pupils construct a 3D model of a plant or animal cell. It's part of a cross-curricular theme the school calls Magical Worlds, a skills-based way of working derived from the Royal Society of Arts Opening Minds program. But when the school first started to discuss using Opening Minds, Sue Ecott was skeptical. It sounded wonderful, the idea of developing students as thinkers. And all I was thinking was, yeah, but how am I going to teach electricity? How am I going to deliver forces in a curriculum that is so skills-based? Science was one of the departments Alan Griffiths invited to an Opening Minds Planning Day at the end of 2005. One of the big things that teachers were really worried about was the impact upon attainment. They were really worried that what they'd done for the last several years was suddenly going to be thrown out with the bathwater. What impact would it have upon their key stage three results and possibly GCSE? Myself and a couple of other heads of department went in extremely negatively. You know, arms folded, terrible body language, awful, you know, just a lot. No, this isn't going to work. We sat around the table and we just thrashed out ways that we could do it. And by the end of that day, every person who was cynical, me included, was completely on side. Where you want to put the beans or peas I think or we'll put that on, this on that particular day, we came up with three projects, Magical Worlds, Incredible Journeys and The London Calling. Those projects came out of us as individuals sitting down and seeing what we shared. And all I needed to do in the science department was then see how our curriculum could be embedded into it. Afternoon, ladies and gents. Notice you're in your teams. You're going to be working in these teams throughout this afternoon. The lesson this afternoon is a lesson that science departments across the country carry out. We've started to look at the structure of a cell. Most science departments will then do the next step, which is build a three-dimensional model. Where this will be different is by actually focusing not so much on the content as the skills the students are using. Right, before we do anything else, we need to be in a situation to know where you are with the skills that you've been working on throughout this term. You should have your diaries out in front of you. Flick through all of those skills. Hinchley Wood has developed a systematic way of focusing on opening mind skills called Thinking Smart. Each year, seven pupil develops a personal skills profile, a Thinking Smart passport. When they arrive at Hinchleywood School, the first month we do a unit called Learning to Learn. And what the students do is that they learn what different types of smarts they are. So they're given a questionnaire, they identify the different strengths of the smarts they are, whether they're people smart, body smart, picture smart. What they then do is that they look at how they can develop those skills in a range of other subjects. We make very clearly early on that every student that comes to Hinchleywood School is smart. They may not think they are, but there is going to be some aspect of them that they excel at. I'm people smart and body smart. And people smart is like when you're like socialising and you get along with people. And body smart is like sporty and everything. I'm music body and something else, but I can't remember. So we spend those three weeks looking at each smart, letting them use each smart giving them skills to develop each smart. I didn't know that I was logic smart and it's helped me get better grades in my maths and it's also helped me with my science. I'm really good at word smart and I think it's logic smart as well. It's like left me to improve on myself smart and my nature smart. They see that they've got an area that needs development but they've just got to work on that. If I just um, stay in my comfort zone, I won't become good at anything else. So basically to get better at um, thinking smart, I need to go out of my comfort zone. There are the skills that we're looking at today. Teamwork, 
maybe there's a role that you haven't done for a while or a role in a team that you haven't done at all. The one that I'm building into this today is conflict. Conflict is something when you work in a group happens. How you deal with that conflict is a big, big issue. Do you go quiet and sulk? So we've got to look at how we resolve that conflict. Okay? Five minutes to decide who's doing what in each team and what resources you require. They will organise that team. There will be a team leader. It shouldn't be somebody who's always a leader. There will be conflict. How do they manage that conflict? It's a big deal for Year 7. At the beginning, when we were deciding our roles, there was a little bit of conflict um, when Jake, um, Rudy and I all wanted to be team leader. Next time, I think I need to step back and let someone else have a go at that and do a smaller job. It was a bit different, cos um, usually I'm, I like to be team leader. Who's the leader? I am. Sam is the leader. I need to work on the team membership and being a speaker, probably because I don't tend to do that very often because I, I like being the team leader. One person tends to want to take over, but they can't do that. They've got to work together. Should me and Jake go and look at the materials? Can I go and have a look as well? OK, oh, so me, me and Rudy. The students will be aware that you're going to be looking at what the conflict is, how you manage that. So the scribe, hopefully, will be looking at that conflict. How is it managed? We can see inside it. That would take a long time, but we can try. Maybe we can use some of this for the nucleus. Three, two, and one. Now silence. Now comes the pressure. You're going to have about 15 minutes to build your plant cell or your animal cell. Then comes the hard bit. So what you're going to do is we're going to do presentations. Whoever's been elected to be speaker, that's your job. And you as speaker are going to report for the team. Obviously, we all want to see yourselves. But much more important, in a way, is you're going to talk about was there conflict? If there was conflict, how did you resolve it? Was there somebody that you felt really, really worked well? That's what I need reported back. Before I let you go, questions? Donnie? Can we have more than one speaker? It's your team. OK. John? Do we have to put what it does? Well, what do you reckon, John? Do you think that would be a good idea or not? All right, John's now up the ante a little bit. He's made it just a little bit more challenging because John has now decided, good lads, that we're actually going to put writing on. And I agree with him. So now you won't just write cytoplasm, you will write what? Hands up. Georgiana, go. It's a jelly-like substance where chemical reactions take place. So now, when you build that cell and you write that, you're also going to have that written underneath. OK, don't blame me, blame John. OK? <laughs> go and collect your apparatus. <clears throat> Our teachers universally say how much more confident our students are in Year 7. But it's not arrogance, it's actually being willing to work with people, ask questions and understand the impact that that has upon the work that they do. We didn't need it like that big. Oh. We've also seen a significant decline in behaviour within the classroom. The number of reported incidents within the school dropped by over 50%. Our actual external exclusions actually dropped by over 80%. I think you should only be that because then we don't, because we've only got 15 minutes. What are these? Where are we putting them? Where are we? Are we, are we, are we see what these? Probably the most important one we need is a timekeeper. I will. All right. You got what? Every five minutes. Oh, no. Then how can you be a timekeeper? You've got about 10 minutes, Chris. You've got to keep them on the case. Because they know that they're this smart or they're that smart, they have that knowledge. So therefore they bring that knowledge to lessons and, therefore, and they have an expectation that these skills will be looked at and that they will have the opportunity to work on them. We learn about science, but in the same time we learn about working with other people. You're meeting different people and um, you get to work with them and you see um, you don't think they're very good at some things, but they are then they make you think about what you could do to improve. The interaction that those students were carrying out was more important 
in some ways than actually just that three-dimensional model. They take that to the playground, they take that to other lessons, and they will take that when they leave school. One of the reasons that they're here is to actually get those skills that they can use when they've left education. Kimberly, we've got five minutes left. I think I learned that to work well, you have to work in a team, and the team has to work together. If one person doesn't work in the group, it won't be as good as if everyone was working together. That is, that's that's kind of pretty good. good. Yeah. It kind of fitted. About the science, I learned so much more about a plant cell, like how structured it is and how strong it can be, even though it's a plant. But in Thinking Smart, I learned that it's really difficult for me not to be a team leader, so I have to try and be something I'm usually not. Yeah. And I also needed to step back and look at the bigger picture instead of just diving in and doing everything at the same time. Yeah, that's the... I should have guessed that. Oh, I know, I know what you're doing. Uh, what about littler ones like uh, mitochondria and stuff? I've always built 3D science models. It's your classic fully kinesthetic lesson. Are they going to be on there? But it would have been build it, present it, done and I would not have focused on any of those skills that these students are learning, which is a crying shame. These are thingy. The lessons become much more vibrant. They are, they are exhausting, often, because these students bring that energy, they bring that extra knowledge, and, and they expect it to be in the lessons. It's 3D. But how could we, in the little bit of time, say, for example, Max, what can we do to make it a little bit more blobby? One and seated. So now comes the presentations. Now comes the role of the speaker. The good thing about our team is that we all tried hard and worked all together. We worked well as a team and we helped make our animal cell. Um, this is the nucleus and we made it out of sponge and it controls what the cell does. The cell membrane is made out of tin foil. And that like lets some chemicals in and some chemicals out. We only had a bit of conflict with at the beginning. We had too many things that we were going to get. So we sat down and decided what ones would work best. We made the animal cell and we had a bit of conflict like when we were choosing the team speaker. Everyone did, didn't want to do it because they were scared. The nucleus is basically like the mind of the uh, plant cell and the vacuole stores uh, loads of sap. I don't think there really was a lot of conflict except for when we were trying to pick um, the team leader. We did a plant cell. We didn't have many um, conflicts in our group. Um, we worked pretty well and we got this achieved. Oh, well, I am definitely aware that people stood up and spoke that haven't done that before.